Hi, this is Mark Wallstrom, and uh, welcome to a video edition of Speaking of Settlements. As you can tell, we've added the unique feature of video broadcasting and podcasting to our weekly conversations that we have on Speaking of Settlements, which is a featured production here on the Legal Broadcast Network and is also part of the Settlement Channel. Um, I'm Mark Wallstrom, I'm your host. I'm also the chairman of the Legal Broadcast Network. But uh, I've spent really the better part of the last six, seven months getting uh, the Legal Broadcast Network funded, venture capital, expanding it, and I am now getting back into my broadcasting and weekly uh, conversations with people about the world of structured settlements, finance, and legal issues. What I wanted to talk about today, and most of our podcasts will be in the five to six minute range, uh, is the mortgage meltdown and the value of structured settlements. A lot of people in the structured settlement industry, in the settlement business, trial lawyers, uh, people who are faced with the decision about what to do with their uh, court settlement, uh, they're faced with a lot of conflicting advice. Do they accept a structured settlement annuity? Should they put the money in the bank? Uh, you know, over the last five to seven years, the siren call was, well, put it in real estate. Real estate's booming. Uh, real estate can't go down. Before that, it was, well, put it in the stock market and tech stocks. They're going to the sky. Uh, the, the moral here is, and all you have to do is look at the headlines, we are in an absolute crisis in the banking industry, in the mortgage business, in the real estate business. The stock market in the last uh, nine months is down almost 25%. It's officially a bear market. And the bond market, uh, I'm going to predict right now, uh, and I think you know I'm certainly not alone in this prediction, is going to have a tr terrible run over the next two to four years, largely as a result of the fact that we're going to be seeing a period of dramatically increasing uh, interest rates. There's no way around it. Uh, we're in a period of uh, massive... Uh, monetary inflation with the Federal Reserve uh, printing dollars as fast as they can pump them out uh, to provide liquidity for the banking and financial markets. Uh, the U.S. government is taking on uh, enormous debts uh, through uh, the FHA, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking about monetary inflation on a scale really never seen before in U.S. history. The only impact, the only way that interest rates can go is up. Uh, the Fed's hands are tied. So it's a particularly bad time for anybody to be buying bonds at this point. So if you factor those uh, you know, items in, the stock market is down and we're looking at a stagnant economy, uh, world markets and the cost of commodities have exploded, it's going to make things very difficult for a lot of companies to continue to show profits and for stocks to do well. Uh, we're, we're not going to see a bounce back in real estate uh, anytime in the next year or two. And even when we do, it'll be a slow recovery. Uh, where should somebody who is looking to settle uh, a case or to protect their money, uh, where should they be putting it? It really leaves you two options. You can either look at your bank uh, or you can look at a structured settlement through an insurance company. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind is we're also looking at a wave of bank failures and bank closings, and I think we're only really in the earliest stages of that. Most people are aware that the FDIC provides uh, protection up to $100,000 per account. Uh, the problem is most people uh, in a settlement are getting more money than that, and you, you don't want to be exposed for more than 100000 in any one particular bank. There's things you can do. You can ladder uh, the CDs. You can uh, do what's known as a CDARS, that's C-D-A-R-S, uh, program with your bank where they buy CDs from a variety of banks and spread the risk. Problem is that CDARS program costs money. Uh, it's taking money off your yield and you tie the money up in CDs. So uh, while that's an option, I don't think it's a particularly attractive option for most people. Plus all the money you put in the bank, uh, the interest is fully taxable. Uh, with a structured settlement, obviously, in almost every instance, the money is income tax free. In almost every instance, you'll get a higher rate than that offered by most banks over a similar maturity. And insurance companies have generally avoided most of the problems uh, that have been plaguing the mortgage, banking, and stock brokerage community. The reason being is that they just didn't have uh, huge exposures in residential mortgages. Uh, I think some of them will probably have some issues with uh, commercial loans, uh, real estate investments. But the companies that write structured settlements really are 10 of the largest life insurance companies, not just in the United States, but in the world. 
Uh, they're heavily regulated since some of the issues in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, they've got limits on the type of investments that they can hold, how much money they can concentrate in any one area. And uh, the, the degree of safety in a structured settlement, uh, you're typically dealing with a company that's rated double A AA or triple A uh, through Standard & Poor's, and at the very least, A plus, if not A plus plus through AM Best. Uh, you've got a higher degree of safety, in my personal opinion, uh, on cases where you've got over $100,000, which is, I would say, the majority of people looking to structure. So in, uh, in, in total, really, what you, if you're looking for where you can put your money at this point in time. If you're a trial lawyer, if you're somebody who's struggling with a decision on, uh, you know, do I buy an annuity? Do I put it in the bank? Do I look at alternative investments? The best advice that I can give you is that in almost every personal injury case, there is uh, access, or you should have access, to a structured settlement professional, whether they work for you and your client, uh, uh, in, in, on the trial or the plaintiff side, or whether they work for the insurance company, you should have access to somebody who can provide you quotes uh, on structured settlements. They should be able to give you a variety of companies. They should be able to disclose to you what the credit ratings are of those companies. They should be able to give you an opportunity to look at a wide variety of plans. The key is make sure you ask your attorney or the claims person that you're dealing with for at least the opportunity to talk with a structured settlement professional. A lot of people are not comfortable working with the insurance company's advisors. There are no shortage of settlement professionals on the structured settlement side. Obviously, my firm, Wallstrom & Associates in Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, we've been doing uh, plaintiff work for almost 25 years. I'm not alone. There's a, I can easily find, if you type in structured settlements into Google, or if you go to uh, my site at Speaking of Settlements, you'll find a broad lineup of plaintiff experts, uh, people that you can call that maybe live in your area or your region, uh, interview them, see who you're comfortable with. But in any event, make sure that you're getting the opportunity to at least have a structured settlement proposal uh, and have it reviewed and have your total picture looked at as part of your settlement process. We'll be doing uh, a whole series uh, over the next month to month and a half on structured settlements, on the decision process that plaintiffs uh, go through, the responsibilities and liabilities of trial lawyers. And actually, this is a great time to remind you, if you have not seen the legendary Joe Jamail's uh, discussion for trial lawyers and for personal injury victims on uh, the necessity to examine and use structured settlements, you have to go see this. You can find it on the NASTA website. It's uh, uh, National Structured Settlement Trade Association. You can find copies of them there. You can find it on my website at Speaking of Settlements. We have copies of it. Or just type in Joe Jamail and Structured Settlements, and you'll find uh, all kinds of re references to it on Google. If you want a really valuable third-party endorsement of this concept, one of the great legendary trial lawyers of all time and a fierce advocate of the rights of plaintiffs. Listen to those, learn a little bit more, but in any event, if you're settling a case, make sure you have a structured settlement uh, professional. Show you what your options are before you go and put your money into another area. There's a lot of people who put their money into tech stocks rather than doing a structured settlement. There's a lot of people who have put their money into real estate rather than doing a structured settlement. And I fear that there's going to be a lot of people putting their money into some shaky banks uh, as well as uh, buying bonds at exactly the wrong time and are going to see losses as well. Talk to a professional, look at what your options are, and be sure to join us here next week on Speaking of Settlements. I'm Mark Wallstrom, and this is a featured production here on the Legal Broadcast Network.